So today I wanted to take a look at some of the ways that Guild Wars 2 is different than other MMOs. I have played MMORPGs since they first started coming out. I probably have a decent measurement of experience. Anywho, uh, Guild Wars 2 is definitely different than most MMORPGs. Um, a couple of the elements are in other MMORPGs, but I've seen a lot of things in Guild Wars 2 that honestly, most of it I wish they'd implement into other games. There's lots to embrace in this game. These are just some of the things that are different from other MMORPGs that I've played uh, than most of them. Again, some of these things are in other MMORPGs, just not commonly. In Guild Wars 2, you uh, don't use a mount, you run around, you have speed ups, you have boosts, you have shove forwards that you can use, you have flight, and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, pulling out anything and waiting four seconds to mount up. Also, when you swim underwater, there is no breath. You can stay underwater for hours and never have to worry about drowning. In Guild Wars 2, you can change your build, and you can change out, you know, your skills just by changing your weapon. Every weapon has different skills associated with it, but also your build. If you want to change it out and be something else, you can do so at any time. You can switch up your points at any time, and you don't have to buy any kind of a book or an unlock to do that. It's just part of the game. In Guild Wars 2, you actually get rewarded for getting achievement points. Um, most games have achievements, but I do not see very often that your achievement points actually garner you at more and more rewards. And uh, your achievement points are actually worth something in Guild Wars 2. They actually give you stuff. They give you better stats for the game itself. So down here, how much uh, gold I get off of drops, how much karma I get off of doing events, how much experience I get just in general. How much uh, magic farm to have, which is when something drops, it has a chance of becoming something better uh, off of baddies and certain uh, magic find affected treasure chests. Anyway, all of that gets stronger and better when I get achievement points. So honestly, there's mixed feelings about them, but I still wouldn't mind seeing more of them. And that is jumping puzzles. I actually enjoy jumping puzzles, and I feel like they add something extra to the game. Um, in general, Guild Wars 2 has a ton of mini games that you can play just to play, and the only game I've seen with more mini games than Guild Wars 2 has is Final Fantasy uh, 14. Honestly, this game has so much to do besides just the typical average go around and kill stuff. like. Every single die you can unlock and use whenever you want without having to pay extra money once the die is unlocked. Um, in game or out of game or any other such whatnot. So you get all the colors and you get to customize them, play with them as much as you want. They have the same thing for finishers. And uh, besides finishers, there's also mail carriers, there's glider skins, there's tons of stuff to collect. Minis. Most games have minis, though. Decide whether you want them to show, all that kind of thing. Um, you can collect outfits, and you can collect actual pieces of armor and weapons. So the trading company in this game, the auction house system, however you want to think of it, is uh, very different in this game than I've seen in any other game. Um, when you want to buy something... <laughs> put that... So say I wanted to buy this butter dye, okay? I can either put an order in and ask someone to sell it to me for that price, or I can buy it for the lowest price that someone's offering it for. If I want to sell something, I can either sell it for the price people are asking it for, or I can sell it for the lowest price that people are offering it for. And once something sells, the funds go right here. And if you buy something, it goes right here. And literally, it'll stay there forever. If you put something up for sale, it'll stay there forever. I uh, uh, took a break from the game for years and I came back and a couple of things had not sold. 
and I had a bunch of things that had sold and the money was right here. There's no worry if you leave the game for a while that your mail's going to be full of stuff and after 30 days it'll expire and you'll lose everything. That doesn't happen in this game. Also, my pretty rainbowiness coming behind me is from my weapon, which is called the Bifrost. Bifrost. The Bifrost is a legendary weapon. Legendary weapons in this game are actually legendary. They're super rare. They're extremely hard to craft. They cost a lot of money if you want to skip crafting them. And uh, they're a symbol of effort because you can't get one without having to put in a lot of it. Even if you spend real life money, it would take a lot of real life money to get that much gold up together to get yourself a legendary. So in Guild Wars 2, there is no actual amount shown for health. There is only a percentage if you turn it on. It starts out the game without even the percentage there. Um, this means that you never know exactly how much health your enemy has because everything in the game is scaled. So right now I'm fighting level 30 mobs and it scales me down to their level. Combat will always require a tiny bit of effort. Also, invisibility, right here is invisibility, I'm invisible, it does not last for forever. Like in most games that I've played that have invisibility, it's usually like a stealthy thing and you can walk past every enemy and never have to pay attention. Uh, they want you to pay attention in this game, always. So your stealth does not last forever. This basically means in PvP, and world versus world, which we'll get to in a sec, um, that you have to actually pay attention and use your invisibility quickly. You have to be light on your feet. You can't just stand around while someone kills stuff for you. So, world versus world. Um, I have seen similar systems, uh, you know, put into some game somewhere, you know, but it's not really part of every MMO standard or anything like that. I'd say besides Elder Scrolls Online, you know, you don't really see it as an MMO straightforwardness. So you can control your PvP build, what gear you have, what build you have, which I haven't messed with that in a while, so it's an old build, what runes, stats, all of that sort of thing, even your weapons. While right here in the mists, waiting to go into your PvP match. If you feel like doing defensive, you can. If you feel like being DPS, you can. Whatever you want to do. It's right here. Most games I play with a PvP is not so equal. Everyone's not on the same par with, in general, the same exact choices. And so it keeps the uh, PvP scaling really, really even for the most part. And it makes your wins actually based on skill and less on, oh, your gear is so awesome that of course you would win, kind of a thing. Now, dynamic events, I've seen pretty much a lot of games start implementing these. Basically, after Rift started making Rifts, it was uh, pretty common. You, you don't have to worry about, you know, that. But what I don't see a lot of is other MMOs putting current events in original maps. They like to move everything forward with each expansion. So, I like that there are things that tie into what's currently happening going on in actual maps that are, you know, young and not that high. This is a level 20 something map and here we are fighting a massive legendary world boss from current storyline content. Basically, you'll always have a reason to come back to the, you know, original maps, to the older maps. The dailies will send you there to do events, or, you know, there'll be a jumping puzzle, or, oh, hey, you never did this content right here. Whatever it is, you'll always come back. And if nothing else, they'll make sure and involve the rest of the world, the original world, with what's going on in the new stuff. Guild Wars 2 has more major meta events and 
huge world boss fights and such whatnot uh, than most games I have seen. Um, you do see world boss fights and things like that in other games, but it honestly, it, it, it's happening 24-7 on Guild Wars 2. There's constantly a world boss or a meta event or something happening that there's always a reason to hang out with other people. In Guild Wars 2, there's no Holy Trinity. There's not even sort of a Fab Four to uh, class specialization. Almost anyone can be a tank, can be a support, can be a healer, can be a DPS. Um, it just depends on the build that you choose for your character and the way that you want to play them. Now I say almost no Fab Fourness because technically for raiding and a lot of top tier fractals I have seen a lot of specializations come out. For instance, uh, this is a Mesmer right here. This is my favorite character. Um, my first character actually that I ever made in the game. And she would be fun for DPS or support or tank, but she would make a really sucky healer in a raid. Now I've seen uh, in other games that once you hit max level you get to continue putting your experience towards stuff, um, but usually it's like stat increases or things like that. Um, Guild Wars 2 doesn't really do a ton of stat increases in specific. Um, you never have to worry about, oh, the next Living World part that comes out this month is going to put out new gear that I have to chase because it has higher stats. So since they don't shove a bunch of new stats down your throat, uh, you get new gear because you like the look of it, or because you want to have every gear skin, not because you're desperate for better stats. Um, the max levelness actually gives you abilities, things that you can use out in the world, in the game itself. Um, things that are, some of them, specific to only certain maps. Some examples of uh, stuff that you can do is you know, run faster in a major city, or, you know, a lot of flying techniques, uh, having actual auto loot, that's pretty nice. Things that you'll notice out in the world that you actually can pay attention to and feel rewarded by, rather than, oh, I gained plus two stats. So in most MMORPGs, there's quests to help you level up and such. Um, in Guild Wars 2, it's not quite the same. There's a dude who has a heart over his head, you finish the heart, by doing a bunch of things that can count toward it. So your average quest says, go fetch, or go kill this many of this, or, you know, go interact with these items. Uh, heart gives you the option of choosing what of any or all of those things you want to do. And because of this, say you hate killing and killing and killing. You could just pick up stuff and bring it back. Or you could just do one of the other options that there are. Go talk to people. Oh wait, you hate talking to people. You can go kill stuff. You can go gather stuff. It's whatever you want to do for that heart. Crafting in Guild Wars 2, you can discover how to craft certain items by mixing items together, putting them in. I don't tend to keep a lot of stuff around, so... And um, also, I've discovered most things already, so that makes it a little more uh, hard to discover things for me. But you basically put stuff in, and if you put enough stuff in, you can discover a recipe. Most games I have seen, the crafting, it basically works that you buy a bunch of recipes, which you do buy some recipes with uh, karma and stuff like that, but basically it's a lot different. Also experience that you get, it's not just experience for your crafting, but it does count toward your actual experience as well. So you can use it to level up characters and things like that. Guild Wars 2 has unique hairstyles to each gender of each race. I am an Asura. I will never find something of another race that has this hairstyle. I will never find a boy Asura that has this hairstyle. All hairstyles are completely unique to the races and genders. In Guild Wars 2, you can have multiple guilds and you can represent them at different times. You can see the chat of the other guild that you're not representing 
even if uh, someone is, uh, you know, talking in that guild and you're representing a different guild. So right now, I'm representing this guild, but if someone talks in this one, I would still see what they were saying and what they were talking about. Getting help. Guilds have a ton of uh, things that they can do during the week to get themselves, you know, together. They can do all kinds of different little missions and things and hang out together. Um, it really encourages you to be part of your guild. Your guild hall is massive, hugely, hugely massive. Um, it is hugely massive going up and down as well as um, across, side to side. Um, so there's tons to explore and do in your guild hall. Um, and decorate. You can decorate it quite a bit too. And uh, your guild hall actually has functions. You can gather in your guild hall. You can do some scribe crafting. You can teleport to certain places that are useful. In Guild Wars 2, the map's already big, but they don't wait for expansions to add content. They like adding zones just as part of the living story that they do during uh, normal stuff. So you're playing, the expansion came out a long time ago, and what's this? They're about to add yet more zones, and it's not even that you have to buy an expansion to get it? What? I guess the uh, main thing about Guild Wars 2 that's really, really different than other games is the free to play is actually free to play. In Guild Wars 2, you can exchange in game currency for, you know, gems, which are bought with real life money. You can buy gems and sell them for in game currency. So you don't actually have to spend real life money on the game if you don't want. So you sign up for your account, sign up to play the free to play version, and you get to unlock all this whatever as much as you want and uh, it's not a case of having to worry about spending real life money on it if you have the time to put into it. The expansion is totally worth it. I highly highly power. recommend getting the expansion but you don't have to and you could still have so much fun in the game. Um, I highly recommend playing it to anyone who's never played it before because it is different, very different from most MMOs that are out there. And once Getting you help. embrace the differences, you might find that you actually really, really love them.